Alright, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Archihacks. And in today's video, we'll take a look at some of my favorite tips with Photoshop. Photoshop has become a bread and butter for architectural visualization. There's no way you can get around making any kind of visuals without Photoshop now. But the thing is, we don't really get to learn about that in school. So in this series, we'll be talking about essential skills to get you through school and excel at wherever you want to go at, for work. So in this video, I'll be walking you through some of the key concepts, one of them being non-destructive workflow, second, making selections in the fastest and most efficient way, and last but not least, automating your workflow so that you can work many times faster. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Alright, so we are in Photoshop now. So I've set up a basic scene with just a little bit of a background, as well as a rendering from our 3D software. So when you're exporting from a 3D software, it's, you could probably find a way to export a material ID like this one. So that really helps you isolate some elements in Photoshop, so make sure to do that in the future. There will also be another video about best tips to immediately boost your rendering ability. So make sure to subscribe for future updates. And in today's video, we'll just focus more on Photoshop. So my first tip is to use non-destructive workflow. So this comes in multiple ways, but starting off, I'm going to be talking about layer mask. Mask is a method of creating another layer that is completely black and white and using that to choose whether this portion of the layer is visible or not. So for example, I want to blend our rendering with the background. So what I'm going to do basically is to hide the borders. So right now we can clearly see that so these buildings don't look entirely realistic. So I'm going to be erasing them. So I'll go ahead and first create a layer by choosing this create a new layer mask and take out a brush tool and start brushing in with a black color. And make sure your mask is selected when you do this so that you don't accidentally draw black all over your actual drawing. So I'm going to be increasing the softness by holding down Alt and right click and moving my mouse up and down. And then once I start erasing, or actually even though I'm brushing, as you can see, the parts of the image that I'm brushing starts to disappear. And now that is because this part of the image painted black is telling Photoshop that you should be hiding that portion of that layer. So now that we have kind of made the transition a bit softer, we can move on to our next step. Okay, my next tip is to use clipping layers. So clipping is somewhat similar to layer masking, but this is an interaction between two different layers. So for example, if I had a second layer, that I just want to transfer only to my actual rendering, I would use clipping. So let's say I just drew, um, like, let's say I just drew this little circle, right? But right now, as you can see, the application of brush is all over the whole, uh, it ripples through the whole, all layers below. But if we hold on Alt and click right in between these two layers, the upper layer gets clipped to the bottom layer. So what that means is, this layer only shows when the bottom layer is visible, and this includes the mask as well. This technique could also be applied using adjustment layers. So in our case, I'm going to be creating a curves adjustment layer and holding down Alt, create a clipping. And once that is done, I'm going to be brightening this up a little bit and then lowering the shadow just a little bit like that. So as you can see, instead of affecting the whole composition, I'm only affecting our foreground elements to be a little bit more contrasted. And using adjustment layer is actually another non-destructive tips and tricks. So another way of working about, you know, brightening, adjusting your image could be going directly into image adjustments and say brightness of contrast or curves. But the problem with this is that once you make these changes, there's really no going back or some kind of information is lost in the process. But using this workflow of clipping with adjustment layer allows you to come back to the adjustment anytime and modify your mistakes. So our next tip involves smart layers. Smart layer basically 
takes your pixel information and saves it permanently as like another embedded element. So what that means is you can always come back and adjust it later down the road. So for example, and the way you create smart layer is by right clicking on a normal layer and convert it into a smart object. So now that this is a smart object, what happens is you can now double click into that layer and it'll open up a whole separate Photoshop document that is inside your Photoshop document. And if you make any changes here and save it, all the changes will be reflected in the main Photoshop file. So for example, we'll go ahead and adjust something about the boy's jacket. So let's say we don't like the green color. We'll go into, we'll create a hue and saturation layer, go into master, go to greens, and we'll move the slider so that the green becomes, let's say, red. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll hit control S to save it and exit out. And as you can see, the changes are made into this smart layer. And if you ever want to make changes again, you can double click into it and all the information is preserved. This could be good and bad because it hides a lot of information in one layer. So I recommend you use it more selectively, but there are many advantages of using a smart object other than nesting some effects. One of them being that even if you scale your image, your image won't lose any information. So for example, if you take a regular layer, let's say, and then shrink it all the way down to like a really small size and then apply that change. And later, if you blow it up again, as you can see, the image has lost its quality. However, when you're using a smart layer, you can scale it to any size, apply the change, and you can always come back to the original resolution. The next cool thing about smart layer is that you can also apply filters and make it adjustable too. So let's say I'm going to be adding Gaussian Blur. Actually, I'll use Motion Blur to add some motion. Let's make the guy move slightly to the side. And then make the distance a lot shorter so he's not moving too fast. OK, that looks pretty good. And then if we say OK, as you can see, the effect has been applied to the layer. But we can also see that there's a sub-layer within the smart object. And that is Smart Filter, Motion Blur. And then if you ever realize that, oh, I don't want this motion blur anymore, you can always double click on the name of the effect and then adjust it again. You can come back anytime with it. And if you don't want this effect at all, you could simply turn off the eye icon on the uh, effects and restore what it was before. Now, there are many benefits to using smart layer, uh, smart objects, but we'll only cover this much for today. So for our next tip, I came to another rendering. So this is an eye level rendering where there's a lot of entourage and people, atmospheric elements put onto it. But in this time, I'm gonna be focusing on this kid right here. So you've probably used free transformation tool before. It's accessible by going to edits, free transform or control T. So control, uh, free transform basically allows you to make basic transformations. But you could also make more advanced adjustments such as skew using holding down control and then moving down one of the uh, dots in the middle. Or if you move the corner pins, as you can see, we'll modify just one side of it. Another thing that you could do with it is by, and you could modify multiple pins at the same time by holding down control, alt, shift, and dragging it and it'll make um, proportional changes to on both sides. And this works the same way for skewing as well. And of course, you probably use the, use the custom liquify tool, something like that, to make some simple adjustments as well. But in this case, we'll undo all the changes and go into our next tip. All right, hope you guys found this video useful. Make sure to try them out and find your own application for it. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, make sure to check out our channel and check out our website. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.